this is going to be kind of a bucket list clerkship. So you get the opportunity to tick off your checklist, all of the different procedures that maybe you've seen, but have not had the opportunity to perform, or maybe you just performed once and you really want to try them again. Things that I've been aware of, but not had a chance to actually do or practice. And that was what drew me to it. Um, I had reached out to Dr. Bookbinder prior to the clerkship starting because I was considering dropping it for another externship or another elective. Um, and I kind of asked her, you know, what is really the goals of this clerkship? What are the things we're going to be doing? And she let me know, you know, we're going to be actually hands on practicing all these different skills. And that's what really drew me to keep it in my schedule. We restarted this clerkship because we felt like, especially immediately before graduation, we wanted to have one more touch point with our equine focused students so that they had the opportunity after going through their clinical rotations to really know what they were going to be doing in equine practice, uh, the procedures that they saw that they maybe wanted to refine and practice on their own um, and give them the opportunity to engage with those with predominantly the teaching herd. So there's not a clinical responsibility on this clerkship. The students are just in lab or in discussions like day in, day out, focusing on um, hands-on clinical skills and understanding how those clinical and diagnostic skills will be utilized in a kind of case scenario. In the clinic, there are lots of things we're learning and like but we're also, there are a lot of other factors at play, right? The clients, the type of patient, all those things, what wa actually walks through the door. Um, so depending on what the cards have given you is what the experience that you get versus here, they've set it up to be like, nope, everyone's gonna get the pass the tube. Everyone's gonna get to ultrasound, which has been really, really a nice experience because I don't feel like I'm stealing experiences from anybody or I'm getting cut short. For some of these things, if I've done them in a lab, they've been on models. As great as models are for getting muscle memory, they're nothing like the real thing in a lot of sense that like every time you hit the models up a glottis, it's, it's going to feel the same. Different horses feel different and learning to like really crank on their heads. Sometimes the models we have, you know, aren't simulating how you'd be standing in real life for different models and things like that. And so I really appreciate the opportunity to practice on live horses. It is really helpful, I think, especially at the end of their clinical year, to remove them from the cases and let them really focus on the procedures because that clinical year has shown them kind of why we do those procedures and in what contexts. And then um, they may not have necessarily, on a patient, on a client-owned animal, been able to perform the procedure. Now they can say, you know, I saw you know, a dozen transrectal palpations when I was on medicine, but I never got to do one. Now I actually get to feel at least what a normal horse feels like so that um, I can feel confident applying that independently once I graduate. Nasogastric tubes. Um, I remember that was something I have seen uh, large animal vets do over and over, riding with them in the field. Very important part of a colic workup. It was something I did not have a chance to do um, to place one myself um, during my regular large animal rotation. Um, and that was actually at the very top of my bucket list for this clinical rotation. And the first day we came in, we were practicing passing those by ourselves. So I knew I was in the right place. We chose to divide the clerkship mostly between body systems. We allotted more time for the gastrointestinal system because it is the body system that, uh, in terms of caseload, they will probably see the most once they go into equine practice. Within that body system, there were several labs where the students were able to practice rectal palpation, uh, even including during laparoscopic guidance, uh, which allow them to, in real time, see where their hand was going and identify those structures so they could see they were touching the spleen and then feel comfortable knowing, okay, now I know what the spleen really feels like. Other body systems that were included were cardiovascular, so uh, that entailed ECG analysis and point of care echo. The respiratory system with endoscopy, tracheal wash, bronchoalveolar lavages, they got to do all of those procedures. And then the nervous system, which also included cervical radiographs. I had never gotten the chance to rectal a horse just because the opportunity was never the stars hadn't aligned for that. And um, so that was a really cool thing that I was really excited about doing. We've gotten to ultrasound before, just not a ton of practice. So it was really cool to be able to look and be like, okay, I know where I am on the body. I know what I should be seeing, things like that. Dr. Bookbinder does a really good job at 
nailing home like the things that we're going to be doing quite a lot. We have past many tubes, we've ultrasound, we've rectaled. They've done a really great job, Dr. Bookbinder and Dr. Moriera, with this clerkship of really zeroing in on what's important and what is um, gonna be the best skills for us to be confident in going forward, and they do a great job of supporting us in that. Everyone here in academia is really more or less here for the students. It could be elsewhere, um, but it's really the students that keep us here and bring us to work every day, and especially knowing how important that um, confidence is when you graduate, seeing that develop over the three weeks is like incomparable. Um, there's like no greater feeling than watching someone really master something.